guys happy thursday it is hacking time and uh getting started a little bit late um had a few delays getting all my stuff ready and started and up but i am here i am here for as long as we can be here the republican national convention i republican national convention is going on so uh we've had some issues the last couple of days with um streams going in and out and so we're going to find out how this goes. Hopefully, hopefully we stay alive. But, um, but just be forewarned that if you get a lot of buffering, let me know so that I can hopefully adjust. Um, but otherwise, we're going to get into it and we're going to do our thing because uh, that's what we do here. So I don't have a set plan for tonight. Um, I can keep working on trance, but I actually kind of took a break from that to start working on the Magic 2.0 patch, uh, which is, if uh, you haven't been following the forum, is basically an update to the Magic system where we're going to cut down on the amount of RAM by adding, by using a byte per Esper and a bit per spell rather than a byte per spell. And so basically the goal is to set it up so that there's a table and you can assign any character, any magic list. And so all those magic lists can be shared and then you can get up to 16 magic lists. Now, most people aren't going to end up having to reshare those, <coughs> but it's nice to have the option to be able to put anyone anywhere with whatever. So that's the goal. That's what I've been working on. And of course, like a dummy, I decided to do the hardest thing first. So that's what I'm doing. Anyway, hey Mog, hey Dastern. Green day today, I like it. <coughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I was like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, yep, I uh, decided to switch it up a little bit. And, uh, cause I felt like it. Cause why not? Plus it'll be very easily, e a lot easier to uh, visually tell apart the videos when I'm looking at them if they're separated by color. Hey, Lock Kirby. Yeah, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to give it a shot. It has not been working very well for anyone else that I know. So, so we're going to try. So, this is what I've got so far actually. The I I decided to I had to restructure the um the level up code. Uh, let's find that. Go there. Okay, not the level up code. This is so. This is post battle, and it starts going through all the different things it's got to do. And the way that the magic system currently works is that when you're learning magic from whatever source, um, for after party, for after battle. So if you learn it through level up, if you learn it through an esper, or if you learn it through equipment, what it's going to do is it adds up what you've got, and then it saves after you learn it it sets it to 80. So it doesn't set it to FF right away, it sets it to 80. Okay, which is the equivalent of 128. All right, so it sets it for 128 <coughs> because you can't really get more than that. And so it does that as it's going through the code and then it gets to the end and I don't have it labeled in here, but it is This one right here, this subroutine right here actually goes and sets all the level ups. So what it does is it, or um, it, it, this, this displays the messages after battle that says, so-and-so learn this spell, so-and-so learn this spell, so-and-so learn this spell. So there's these two states to knowing the magic and I'm already seeing buffering. Now, <coughs> let me know if that keeps popping up for you guys. <coughs> So anyway, so it sets it to, to 8-0, and then when it's ready to display the messages, it sets all of them to FF um, to designate, okay, this is learned, learned. So that's all well and good when you're working with a byte per spell, but it's a little bit more complicated when you're working with a bit per spell because you don't have three states for a spell. You have two. You have off or on. 
So I had to restructure this so that when you learn the magic, it's going to uh, queue up and send the send the um, message through. Okay, but in order to do that, um, I basically moved the learning code down to underneath where it displays the AP message or the uh, I don't know magic points or whatever that you learn from battle. I don't remember what they're called. I've only been playing this game for 20 years. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called, but it's essentially AP. All right, so I had to move that down um, because I fixed the I fixed the spells taught by equipment to not do that because we can't do that with this new system. And then I moved all the rest of the learning by espers down here and and mixing it with the code that displays the messages. <coughs> so it'll do character level up. And when the character levels up and it goes through the code for that, it's going to jump to the same code that sets the bit and displays the message. And then after that, it'll go to the... Um, the Esper code, and then add your points for your Esper, and then it needs to go through each spell in the Esper, in that particular Esper list, and then check that against every other spell in every other Esper list, and add up the totals of all of those to see if they get to where it's learned. And if it gets to where it's learned, it goes in and tries to set the bit. Okay, and then if the hey Gintech, ahoy there. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so then it tries to set the bit, and um, if the bit is already set, it doesn't display the message. If the bit is set, then it'll display the message. So that's, that's the logic, and that's what I'm working through. So where I've got it so far, um, this was the Curse Shield and Learning Magic Through Equipment, which I got to basically just cut out all of the learning through equipment. So it freed up a bunch of space, which incidentally the next bits of code that I'm working with are right there, so I can just shift all that up and save myself a lot of space. I'm hoping not to have to call another location, but there are a few tables involved. There are a few tables involved. <laughs> so those are probably gonna have to be elsewhere. So I don't know what that's gonna look like on the final patch, but as far as Children of Vector is concerned, it's gonna go, I don't know, probably the F2 bank. That's my guess. All right, so then the first thing it does when you pull it up is it's going to load the AP for the Esper, check to see if uh, you've already mastered the Esper, like if you already have enough AP that you would have mastered any spell that would be on there, because the lowest percent you can do is 1%. <coughs> and if it has, it exits, because it means you've already learned all the spells, so it'll exit the function. And if it doesn't, then it's going to... Um, it's going to add the AP from battle and store that back in the spot. Okay, so then, so now we've updated the Esper. And now the next bit of code is gonna go in, find the next spell, find the, find the first spell. Finds out what spell it is. Compares, see if it exists at all. If it doesn't, it's going to branch out of that particular area and then circle back around to check the next spell. All right, and so then the next bit is the part that I'm actually getting ready to work on. Um, and this is where I've been like kind of going back and forth on what it is I'm actually going to do because I have to juggle a couple of different things. So what we've got is we have the um, our current Esper, which can get pushed because we don't need that until later, until after this function exits. Um, I'm going to need another variable for the current Esper that it's checking in the spell list. And what it's gonna do when it's checking, when it's accumulating to check to see if there's enough AP to learn a spell is um, it's just gonna start at the beginning of the Esper list and just go all the way down until it either fills up or runs out of Espers to check. Runs out of, yeah. <coughs> okay, so it's gonna go down every spell of every Esper until the spell fills up. Okay, so I need, I need a value that is accumulating I need um, the Esper I'm currently working with. And then I need to preserve the Esper that I actually have equipped because it has to... Actually, does that have to come back out later? 
I might not. We'll revisit that. Um, but then I also need to be able to simultaneously, while I have those numbers and I'm balancing them, I need to be able to pull um, what the spell is on the current Esper I'm on and pull the rate and then be able to manipulate the rate with the multiplication function so that I have a value to add to the other thing. So, <coughs> well, I don't need to worry about the Esper. Yeah, yeah, I don't really need to worry about that. I'm just trying to think if I need to have that for another part of the function later. I don't think I do. Oh, I need it when I'm back out here. So it needs to be pulled again when I come back out here because it's got to check the next. I, so I just need to preserve this x value, really. Because the x value here is the offset for the esper. That's what it is. I'm not trying to preserve the esper number. I'm trying to preserve my place in line so that um, as it's going through and checking the spells on that esper, that that works properly. That's what it was. That's what it was. Um, so that's where I'm at. So I've got to be able to basically be constantly accumulating one number, but still be able to pull two different numbers that I'm working with. And so I think my accumulated value, since I'm saying this out loud, it's I'm, I'm hoping this is helping me. I'll store that in a temporary value. And then um, I'm going to need at least one other temporary value. Because even if I'm pooling, even if I'm using the memory like A and B and switching those back and forth, I'm still going to need to occasionally work with this. And add with carry affects the accumulator, not the memory, right? Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, man, I need to make like a flow chart. I did not, I, I, I have to admit, I did not prepare this week. So this is just what I've been beating my head against the wall doing. And um, <laughs> I've had kind of an interesting week. And so it's been, um, it's been tough for me to get, get some stuff done. <laughs> Rubber duck debugging. What in the world is that? Okay, so add with carry does, does, um, affect the accumulator not the not the memory address okay good just making sure because some things some things affect the memory and some things affect the accumulator so try i gotta man opcodes people <coughs> what is rubber duck debugging also how is everyone tonight <coughs> we can we can make this a chatting night because I'm doing stuff that's really, really dry. It's just the only thing I've got going right now. I could do more trance stuff, and um, I could do more um, map editing. I had a problem with my editor um, not reading something properly, and so I had to get uh, Mad Seer to fix it for me. And so I can start working on Figaro Pass again. So rubber duck debugging is an informal term used in software engineering for the method of debugging code. The name is a reference to the story in the book the pragmatic programmer in which programmer would carry around a rubber duck and debug their code by forcing themselves to explain it line by line to the duck. <laughs> all right, cool. You guys are all my rubber ducks. Cool. All right. I can work with that. I can work with that. Hello, my rubber ducks. I'm going to try, I'm going to try to remember that. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that means with the values that I keep pulling, I'm gonna have to pull. I'm gonna have to pull one, and then you know, pull a value, and then pull a um, man. So there's like three different things I have to do because so I pull a spell. I don't need to keep that spell. I just need to keep the. I just need to keep the multiplier if it's the correct spell. If it's the wrong spell, it's going to just go to the next spell. If it's the right spell, it pulls the multiplier. And then it needs to pull the AP for that Esper. There's a lot of things to juggle. I might have to I might have to find um 
I might have to find another way to do this that's simpler. Because let's, uh, all right, let's do this the fun way. Um, okay, good. What do you guys see here? That's That looks about right. Let's do this. All right, let's do something visual because that's more interesting for you guys. What? Yeah. All right, new diagram. Magic. All right. So this is this is the function of code we are working on. We are working on um, learning magic from an Esper. Actually, the specific part of code we're working on is check Esper's to see if spell is ready to be learned. And I'll actually save this. Oh, what are you doing? Come on. There we go. All right. And we'll drag you over here somewhere. What are you doing? All right. Whatever all that is. OK. All right. So when we enter, that's not enter. Here, just delete it. Ellipse should be enter, right? Or is that exit? Uh, flow chart. I don't know why it matters. Stupid stuff like this matters to me. I want to make sure I'm using the right symbol. Even though this is literally for our purposes. I could be like, alright, this guy right here, this means it's time to go to the bathroom or something. I don't know. I could make it anything I want. Um. All right, whatever. Whatever, okay. All right, so this I remember is internal storage. And let's just, let's just make a list. Let's just make a list of things we want to do. All right, so coming in, we've got X. Why is it automatically default back to 12 point font? You guys probably can't read that. Can you guys read that? If you guys can read that, I'll leave it. If you guys can't read it, I'll I might still leave it. We'll find out. All right, so X comes in as um, offset to memory for, or no, wait, offset to table. Esper table for current spell. Okay, so that's what X is when we enter when we enter the function. You can read it? Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, what are, what are my other variables? Y, Y is current spell number. Well, Y is the counter for spells to check for current Esper. All right, so Y equals counter for number of spells to check and the accumulator is the spell number right and the spell number I also need to keep saved because I have to check it each time and a equals spell number all right, so that's what's there when we, when we enter the function. Things we need to keep track of is uh, current location in Esper's spells list. Esper's is, 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 is. You can read it to full screen. Well, why weren't you on full screen in the first place? Yeah, I see it over on mine. I'm actually keeping my window up today, which I haven't done in a while, but yeah, it's like super tiny. All right, so there, look, I did not spell that right. All right, so current location in the spell list because, shoot, and I need to keep track of which Esper it is or otherwise do a calculation to figure out which Esper I'm in. So I guess, regardless of how I do it, I need to keep track of what Esper am I checking. 
Um, you can't chat in full screen. Do a pop out. All right, let me. Um, ah. If it would let me type in whatever size I wanted, it wouldn't be an issue. But it doesn't do that, so. Well, we'll see what it does. Um, uh, accumulation of AP for spell. Is that it? Current location in the list, what Esper I'm checking, accumulation of the spell. Um, yeah, and I can't just check it. I actually have to pull the value. So yeah, so I need to check um, current spell learn rate. Gah. <laughs> Theater mode. All right, good. I might have to shrink these down again. Now I think that's I, th I think that's everything I need there. I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit. Of course, it's gonna do that. Um. All right, so I come in and this does not need to come back out, but I do need it while I'm in here, so that doesn't matter. That and both of these need to come back out. All right. So current location in the list. I'm going to shrink that down to, oh, there we go. I need to know what Esper it is I'm checking, the accumulation of AP for the spell, and the spell learn rate. Um, actually, I can do current, current spell slash spell learn rate. Because as soon as I check the spell, I can branch to either grabbing the spell rate or the thing so I don't need to keep the spell again but I do need to have a copy of the spell somewhere else but it is going to pull it but it'll pull it right away again okay so for all intents and purposes all right so the multiplication function what does that use again So result is a 16-bit A. What am I sending in? No, not function two. It's multiplication function. Multiplies a low bit of A. You mean byte of A? So, so I need them set up in A and B, and it comes out with a 16-bit A when I use the multiplication function. Oh, so I need um, AP of current. That's what it was. AP of checked Esper. Yeah. So, so there's a few things I'm I'm uh, kicking around in here, but ultimately the last part needs to have these two together, and it comes out with a new value, and then I'll add with carry to that, and then add, and then store it back into this, and then. Uh, And then grab this stuff again. So I might have to chunk this up. I, I think I can chunk th chunk this up into a couple different parts. I thought it was going to be one big thing, but I think it's going to be in parts. Okay. Hi. Um. Alrighty. Alrighty, so um, so the first thing we should do is we need to be able to check against a, the spell number, which is an A currently. So the first thing we need to do is store A somewhere. Now, I don't even know that I need to do this. I, I'm 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 starting to get a feel for this in my head, so I'm not sure I need um I'm not sure I need a, the diagram anymore. 
We'll but we'll we'll just do um store a in temp variable and push and we're gonna push x and y because x and y don't need to come back out until the end and then a is a in a temporary variable to check each list on if um on if the spell that's pulling is the correct spell, right? So that's the first thing that needs to happen. And then the next thing I need to do is set up the current location in the list and the esper number. <laughs> Thanks, Mad. Thanks, Mad. Sorry to disappoint. <clears throat> All right. Actually, talking about this out loud is really helpful. I've been I've been trying to wrap my brain around this for a couple days, and there's so many things to juggle, and um, and this is helping me. Oh goodness gracious! How many of you guys play Pokemon Go? And have any of you been hit by a car yet? <laughs> All right, so let's go down here. So we're storing a temp variable. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give that temp variable a name. We're gonna store it in 10. Cause it can use, we can just use a scratch pad. You don't have a phone? You don't have any phone? Pokemon, no. Okay, I really like Pokemon, but I do not have Pokemon Go. I do not have a smartphone. <laughs> but that's okay. I have a dumb phone. Dumb phone. I heard those were good, but I never really tried them. But I've heard a lot of good things about them. I've thought about going back and playing them, but then I'm too lazy. I'm honestly, I, I literally am not playing any games right now, which is weird. Except for the occasional round of uh, Diepio, D-E-I, or D-I-E-P dot I-O. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, yeah, if it was your favorite game, you would be logging into the pokemonhacking.com stream not the ff6hacking.com stream all right so we're storing a in temp variable 10 we're pushing x and y cuz we don't need them until we're done with this part of the function so the next thing i need to do is i need to set um, x to 0 oops to start of um Esper spells. And what I think I need to do is I can recalculate the Esper each time, but I don't think that's very efficient. I think I should just keep track of what Esper number I'm on. Dragon Quest Mystery Dungeon. I am going to be all over Dragon Quest Builders, though. You don't even know. I will be doing... I, I, I will spend time on my FF6 hacking stream to, like, play Dragon Quest Builders. I'm hyped for that game. <laughs> okay, it won't take my Thursday nights, but it might uh, take up some other time. I won't lie. All right. So I have to start the Esper spells, and then... All right, so how, how should I keep track of what Esper I'm on? Because every 12 bytes is an Esper list. Yeah, every 12 bytes is an Esper list. Because you have up to six spells, and then there's a learn rate for each one of those spells. So should I just do it by Esper? 
and then do Esper one two three four five six next Esper one two three four five six, um, because hypothetically I can just go through. Wait, do I need to keep track of what? Oh, because I need to know the learn rate. No, the learn rate comes right after. I don't need to keep track of what Esper I'm on. Blah. I don't need to keep track of what Esper I'm on. All I need is the learn rate for that specific one in the list. Never mind. What Esper am I checking? Forget you. Go away. Go away. Oh, no, I do, because I need the AP. Dang it. Ugh. So many things. So many things. And then that means I have to relate it. Not only am I checking that, but I have to relate it to that specific list. Huh. Okay. All right. So, yes, I do need one for the current one. So, man, what a pain. All right, so the, what we're going to do is basically starting it over again with X at the start of the espers. And maybe I shouldn't say which one's going to be which right now, but start of espers. And then we're going to set Y for um, 5 for... Um, checking each spell, right? Because that way when it gets down to zero and we cycle around again, X will move up to one, Y will um, flip back to five. So that way I have something to keep track of which Esper I'm on. And then that Esper will get added to their... Um, will eventually get added to the saved location for that particular character spell list to find out which byte to check, which means I'm going to need an indirect um, a load A, or yeah, load A to an indirect location at some point. Which I think needs to be, hold on, there's only one that works, and I don't remember if it's X or Y, I think it might be Y. And so I might need to flip those. Hold on. Um, boot it. Opcodes. Come on. All right. Load a indirect. Indirect. I got to use Y for that. Yes, characters will be able to sh just share spell lists. Wait, what? I already have I already have the whole part worked out. Um where the characters are sharing spell lists. So that's that's already that I've already got already got all that accounted for. In fact, I've got that oh shoot. That's not where I want now I'm doing this one. Is up here. So it's gonna go it's gonna go um AP gained followed directly by the spell bits. AP gain followed directly by the spell bits. For list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, up through 16. And then there's a table that's going to say which characters use by their properties ID goes to which spell list. And so that will look like kind of like a repeating pattern, but you'll be able to, you know, obviously change those up as often as you like. And then. I'm going to have a spell bit table so that I can save some calculation time, which incidentally this takes up more space, but I can put it somewhere else. And so what this is, is the offset for the spell um, based on this location. So it's going to save, it saves this location when you're checking AP and then it moves on to the bit list when it's ready to check to see if the spells are, you know, when the spell's ready to be learned, it goes and checks the bit, sets the bit if it needs to be set, and displays the message. Um, but it'll find this address, and then it pulls an offset for which byte to check, and then, um, and then a bit. Um, to check. 
Okay, so we've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 1, 0, 2, 0, 4, 0, 8, 0 for what bit to check for each spell. So so this correlates to the um, to the spell ID. And then I'm adding another one, and this is a bonus feature that I didn't talk about before because I just thought of it. This um, doesn't take place, isn't going to occur here, but this is going to exist um, everywhere that we are actually using the magic. And this is going to be the actual spell table. So all the spells that you set in your espers are going to basically get transformed into another spell because so there's like tables 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 everywhere because you can't necessarily you can't necessarily move these at least I don't think you can if someone knows, if someone knows how you can assign the espers to different spells, maybe you can. I'm sure there's a way to do it in the code, but that's actually not what's important. Basically, it's going to go through this list here, and then if people want to use additional spells, the idea is that you can pick anything you want to have it load. And so by default, I'm actually having it come down and start on Riot Blade and go through the Desperation Attacks. Now, I'm not going to turn off Desperation Attacks by default. That is up to people if they want to do it. You know, the spells as they currently exist don't... Um, you'll never learn those. So there's nothing in there that's going to cause problems. But if you would like to learn it, there will be instructions involved on what to do, how to do it, suggestions, things like that. So that way your spell list can be literally any spells in the entire, um, any ability in the entire game. And those will be the spells that you are learning and using. Okay, so, so tables, 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 tables. Tables everywhere. And we're saving RAM. Bam. I gotta figure out something to do with that though, because this is totally like, totally superfluous if um, I don't find something to do with that SRAM. I'll find something, dang it. I'll add more, I'll add more event bits or something. Alright. Alright, alright. So, so this is where we are. So we need to flip X and Y here because Y needs to be the Esper I'm on and X can be the number that I am currently checking. That was that was actually the first thing I was going to do and um and it wasn't it really wasn't that bad. It was just taking up a lot of space with calculation. And so I didn't have a problem with that. It was just already too messy. And so um and the way I've got this set up is that any time the Esper is not mastered, it's going to check every single spell on the Esper list to um, to see if it's ready to learn before it checks to see if it's already learned. Because I didn't want to have to do that multiple times. Although now that I've got the table, I might be able to go back and skip that. But then again, that's the reason why I have the table. Otherwise, I have to. Otherwise, I have to go through the whole thing to figure out which. Um, spell and bite it is and it wasn't that hard to do again. I had it. I just got rid of it because it's table simpler and cleaner um, It would have to go through it then check the bit and Then and then go into all of this and then go in and set the bit so it has to find the bit again um, Which means changing the address value for where you're at for the um, which I was gonna save in a different place anyway, but it just it just starts being more <laughs> And so I'm trying to make this as clean as possible. And so tables are clean. Tables are cleaner than code. I want the code to be to the point. I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on it. <coughs> so tables for the win, exactly. Exactly. All right, so we've got the start of our espers, which will in turn eventually be a an offset. 
Um, I don't want to change. Oh, and another thing in here too, and I didn't mention that, is currently F4, the value in F4 is um, offset to to uh, the character AP list. Because we're going to use that later to figure out where the spell bits are. All right, so we're going to set those up. All right, we'll set those up. And then with those, we need to pull the first number of a spell or of the Esper. Count for spells to check. Offset. I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I'm missing something. Because in here, I might need to keep another counter, right? No. You know what I? What do you know what I'm gonna do? This can actually just be zero, or let's make it even simpler let's make this uh, B let's make this B because that's 11 and what it does is gonna just gonna go down the list and we'll just do um, decrease X decrease X to get to the next spell and then once we get to zero then we'll know we're ready for the next Esper and so we'll reset it to B and then increase that note value. I'm putting two pieces together here. So when you're going through the code in uh, vanilla, all it's doing is it's keeping track of, it's increasing X two at a time as it goes through the list of spells that that Esper knows. Oh, uh, you know what? That means I should just start this at zero actually. And then have it increase up to, up to B. Yeah. Okay, so now I can use that directly as, as a thing. Okay, all right, so now that we've got that, we're going to be check Esper for spell. <coughs> and then, yeah, check Esper for spell. Is it the spell we want? Also, I need to set up one other thing in here. I need to set up a RAM value. Um, what did you say A was? Spell number, okay. So, yeah, okay. We also need an accumulation value. So we need to put, um, We need to put, and we can make that 11 to 0. So AP accumulation. Ah, I'm just going to leave it AP. All right, so we're checking Esper for the spell. Is it the spell we want? If no. Then we're gonna go back to the next, you know, the next thing. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's go over. Um, actually, there's really one more step here really one more step here so let me put one of these in more spells on this Esper 
there is, it's going to check the next bell. If not, it's going to check next Esper, which would actually be in a thing that I haven't done yet. Let's grab these. Drag them down here. Hey, Kuga, how's it going? How's it going? We're making tables. All right, so let me grab that. Put you on there. All right. Next, Esper. All right, checks Esper's for spell. Is this the spell we want? If it is, pool, learn rate, and AP and multiply. There's a creature creator thing? Well, that's cool. Um, and no should just cycle this back around. Oh, that's what's gonna happen. Watch, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna grab you and go out here. So if it's not the next one, then we're gonna go through all this. I just made myself a weird infinitesimal loop here. There should be a last Esper thing. Uh, this is really sloppy. Last Esper. not we're going to exit all right so pool AP and learn rate I'm gonna cross the streams guys Across the streams. What I need to do is pull this down here so that this can come down here. Hold on. Man, I normally make these a lot prettier. HD versions, you can recruit monsters to fight with you. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's like, uh, no, that's, that wasn't as far as I remember. I mean, I haven't played it since college, but that is kind of neat. That's totally a Dragon Quest thing, too. That was, like, my favorite thing about Dragon Quest, at least Dragon Quest V, um, was being able to recruit the monsters and then them having their own level-up progression. I really liked the Slime Knights because they were actually pretty strong and they could have healing and stuff like that, and so I thought that was, like, really neat. And then when they came out with the uh, Dragon Quest Monsters Joker, I was all over that. There's a third one for 3DS, isn't there, in Japan? We need that. We need that. Now, do they do they have, like, their own level ups? and Or not level ups, uh, sphere grid? Do they have their own sphere grid? It was in 5 also. Five was the first one to do it, I believe. I don't think four did it. Four might have, but I'd, four might have had a version. But yeah. Now you're gone. All right, all right. I'm crossing the streams. I don't care if it's a little bit hairy because I'm just laying this all out, and then I'm gonna get to trying to code it. Okay, and this is the hardest part. Everything else, everything else after I get through this is going to be easy. Level up through, or you know, learning spells through level up is going to be easy because it's going to be check the spell. Is it on the right? You know, are you on the right level to learn it? And then it's going to go find the bit and turn the bit on. And it'll do this. It's going to do the same thing. I'm going to reuse the same function for um, 
all you have to do is pass in the uh, spell number and it'll check to see if the bets, bits already set and then if it's not set it'll set it and then display the message <coughs> and so I'm going to use the same code for the level up so if the level up has it then it's going to grab the spell number pass it into the exact same function which will do the exact same thing and then spit you back out um, so that'll be easy and then display is really the next thing I have to worry about, which again will be a lot less complicated than this because I'm not worrying about calculations. The only other thing that will be similarly hairy, but I will already have it all laid out here, is displaying the percents learned from the Esper menu. Now, ultimately, if I wanted to super simplify this, I could cut it down so that it only checks for the specific Esper you're on, but I feel like that's really lazy and I don't want to remove any unnecessary, or I don't want to remove any functionality unnecessarily. There we go. Is there, or Ultima and Omega weapon, were they the super optionals in, uh, in 10? All right. Ready to learn. And then if not, We're going to check for more spells. So let's bring you back up here. You should be connected to... Ah! What are you doing? Oh, this looks bad. Here, let's do that. And then that. I might rearrange these. I'm not intentionally making a maze, just so you guys know. Nemesis 10k. 10,000 HP is not very much. You mean 10 million? million? 10k is 10,000. All right. So pool learn rate, multiply. So ready to learn. If not, we're gonna check out here. If it is, it'll just come down to um, whatever. Learn spell function, and then because I'm super lazy, I'm going to bring it all the way out here. Is there another spell to learn? Come on. Of course. Okay. More spells on Esper. Stop doing that. All right, then you'll check that. And then if there are, you'll come up over here and then you go over here and then we'll just go to the next. More spells on this Esper. And if not, then you'll come up here and you'll exit. How's that guys, isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty and nice and neat? What did I do? Yikes. Oh no, we're not gonna go to the next, we're not, that's, the, that's, that, that's not the place we're gonna go. The next thing we have to do, oh, actually, you know what, that's it. That is actually it. Because this is only for specific, um, This is only for a specific spell. We're entering on a specific spell. So after we do the spell learn function, we're exiting. We're done. Penance, that sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah, I don't really remember that. 
It's also been a really, really long time. But that's cool. It's no Final Fantasy VI, but whatever. All right, so let's so so let's go back and let's 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 check this before I start trying to put this into code. Um. So we'll store a and let me know if any of this sounds like it might cause a problem with the actual coding. All right, so we're putting. Oh shoot. Well, I can worry about that later. The actual spell learn function is going to be its own thing. So we are just worried about finding out if a spell is ready to be learned. All right, so we're gonna store the spell number in 10. We're pushing X and Y, because we need to bring them back when we're done. So we go to the first Esper, the first spell in the first Esper, and we set the accumulation value to zero. All right, so we start on the first Esper and we start checking for the spell. When we're doing that, we're comparing to the value in 10. So we're gonna pool A, compare to 10. If it's the spell, we, if it's not the spell we want, then we'll move on to the next spell and we'll keep going around. If we run out of spells for that Esper, so that means X here gets up to like B, then, so we're, this is gonna be a compare on the X to OB. If not, then it'll go up here and it's gonna to check to see if we're on the last Esper. If we're not, then it'll increase Y and set at X back to zero. And then again, start going around, okay? So that should be a functioning loop for there. That's what X and Y are going to continue being. All right, so when we get a spell, when we get a spell, and we're ready to pull the learn rate. I need to use I need to use I pull the spell rate with x, okay? So that doesn't need to change there. And then for the accumulated AP, I'm actually using y. Okay. Okay, because Y is going to be the offset based off of here. Oh, you know what? I need a transformation somewhere in here for, um, and that'll happen up here in the setup. Um, so the um, I need to use F. No, 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 no. Hold on. No, no, we're going to use F4. So, okay. So, when we're pulling this, we're going to use F4, the indirect, with an offset of Y for the Esper number to check that Esper's AP. Okay, we're getting there. All right, this is starting to click. All right, so we're using, we're going to be using uh, this opcode right here. All right, so we're using an offset, uh, an indirect offset, or is it this one right here? I'm not sure which one's which. No, we're not on direct page. Hold on. Hold on. I know this is usable. It's got to be indirect. What's the one they use? What's the one they use in the code? Hold on. Hold on. That is... Starting with that guy. Oh, I can probably just look at it here. When you're pooling with the indirect, when you're using F4, this one here, B1. B1. Okay, yeah, this one here. All right. I thought the direct page was only the, um, was only the first FF bytes up through FF. Oh, but it needs to be a direct page value is where your value needs to be saved, but it can pull an address that is um, that is 16 bits long. Okay. All right, so yeah, so we're gonna use this right here. All right, so the, D, the, the, the direct page value we're using to find our address is F4, which is where their AP list starts, 
which is what is currently the magic list. That Y offset is the Esper number, which gets you to the correct one in that list. So that pulls the AP. All right. And then, and then the X value that we've got currently running here is going to pull the learn rate. So once I grab that, I need to, I'll basically flip that into, um, into B of the memory. <coughs> and then, yeah. And then I'll grab the learn rate with using, by using X on where I'm at. So X, shoot, hold on. I might need one more variable. Or, or at the very least, I'll need to multiply X and Y and then push them off. Because X can't continue going up unless I have another counter that I'm using. I might need another counter to tell me when to increase Y. Okay, so I'll leave X the same. I need to, so I need to create another counter. All right, all right. Um, so next Esper counter in, and we'll just make that 12 or one, one, yeah, one, two anyway, one, zero, one, one, and one, two. Let's for consistently C sake, since this is the order that I'm going to be assigning them. Let's do it like that. So, I, so I'm going to need a counter. These are essentially the same thing. I don't know why I have these in separate stuff. Y is a counter for which Esper I'm on. X is the offset for the, um, for the Esper list. Okay, so the Esper list, because so in the original function, they have to multiply um, the Esper number by OB to get the offset in the grand, the big Esper list for what actual spell you're checking. So that means I need actually X to be continuous. If it goes back to zero, we're going back to checking the beginning of the first Esper because all the, all the lists are like this, you know, side by side by side by side by side. So that means X just needs to keep going. X can't can't reset every time I get to a new Esper. Um, X needs to keep going. So I need another counter that is telling me when to um, update which Esper I'm on. I could create a calculation for it, but it would be a pain in the butt. Actually, there is a division function. Let me see how it operates. If it, if it is perfect, then I'll just leave it. Then maybe I will use it. But it's dividing a 16-bit variable, and I'm really trying not to work with those as much as possible. Yeah. No, I'm going to I'm going to stick with um I'm going to stick with just using a counter and then doing a check resetting the counter and um and increasing the esper number. Right. <laughs> Are people tracking with me? I know I'm talking a lot and I know I'm going through a bunch of stuff. I know this is a coding night. And so I want to make sure people are tracking with me here. Am I making sense? Do you guys understand what it is I'm trying to do with the entire thing? This is a little bit clumsy. If I were like sitting by myself and doing this, I would have taken an extra like 20 minutes just to straighten everything out and make sure it was all perfectly spaced because I have weird OCD that way. Cool. <coughs> all right. But going back over this and doing this visually has actually really, really helped me. I should have done this sooner. And talking out loud helps me too, which I can't normally do when I'm working on this because either my kids are trying to sleep <laughs> Or I'm at work at lunchtime or something, and I'm in a quiet office, and people don't need to hear me babbling to myself. There's uh, there's six spells. If it was eight spells, <coughs> um, 
The only way it would skip, though, is if I was using a counter anyway to tell it when to skip. Because you're right, if it was an even 8, then it would just take a couple, um, it would just take a couple shifts to the right to find out what value we're on. But we'd have to use a counter anyway to tell it when to skip. <coughs> that was a good idea, though. <coughs> Unless I'm misunderstanding something, so please... Yeah, so I'm going to hard code six checks, but it's basically going to use a counter to tell it when it gets to six checks. And when it gets to six checks, it's going to reset the counter and increase my esper number. Because I need that esper number to find the offset for how much AP I have on the list for that esper. Okay? So anyway, so I'll pull the AP, move that into memory, pull the learn rate, and then go to the multiplication function, which will put those together and spit it out in a 16-bit A which I will then just immediately cut back down to a 8-bit um, because it should never be any... It should, it'll never be larger than... It could be larger. It could be larger. Because if it checks an Esper that's actually already mastered like that already has FF in it. Catching more stuff. Catching more stuff. Then um, then I can't just do that right away. I will need to check to make sure... What? What did I do? I'm not flipping you guys off. I, li I would like you to stay. Please don't go anywhere. Please don't go anywhere. There's only like 20 minutes left. You can make it. All right, anyway, so if we check an Esper that has a lot learned, no, because no individual rate should be higher than the AP. I could add a check that if we get to an Esper and it pulls the AP rate and um, I could do a branch of minus, that means if it's over mastered level AP, that it'll immediately exit the code because it knows we already know the spell. So I could do that to avoid having a situation where... All right, so what's worst case scenario is that we get it up to 99. If we get up to 99 and we get to another spell that already has 99, we're still under we're still under um crossing into 16-bit territory. And this is just one multiple single multiplication. This is just a single multiplication. So as long as I do a branch of minus, which will basically cut everything out um, above 126 or 127, then, well, I guess even things with really high learn rates like Bismarck at 20, that'll still break. So I will need that. I, I will need to use that 16-bit. So that means my AP is going to have to be a 16-bit value, which is a pain in the butt. That's a pain in the butt. Okay. It means I'm going to have to change to 16 bits every time I want to increase this. Um, unless I'm just checking for a carry. All right, I need um, I need suggestions. How should I handle the accumulated rate? Should I be? I mean, it wouldn't be too hard to set it up here, where because it's already coming out of the multiplication function with a 16-bit A. Well, 
Well, that's the thing. It's coming out in a 16-bit A, and so there's no carry automatically set. So if I tried to switch it to 8-bit, so I should just, at that point, compare it to FF. Right? And so if in any individual one is above FF, it can't exit right away because it doesn't know if it's on the one that just learned it. So that, so yeah, so it would need to do that. So if any individual rate is FF, then it should jump straight to the learn function from there rather than adding it to, well, I, as long as I make this, as long as I make this, I'll just make it a 16-bit A. I mean, I'll, I'll just make this a 16-bit variable. It'll be annoying, but not that annoying. Because for all intents and purposes, the multiplication function will set it up, will set the 16-bit A for me. And then I can do the work to store it and set it back to 8-bit. You know, the add with carry, the compare, and then setting back to 8-bits before it continues on. So I'll just, all I have to do is set it up once here. And in that same spot, I can, um, no, I actually, no, I won't do that. Okay, I should be all right. Because most of the work's done here, I really only have one, um, one set processor, like one set processor two zero. <clears throat> and that'll be a lot easier to check. <clears throat> yeah, but that is, is that more work? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's the biggest number. That's that's that should be hypothetically the biggest number we run into. Because if it's larger than 99, it'll have exited before then. And the biggest number we have is is if there's a learn rate of 255. Well, 255 times 255 is the max you can get for a 16 bit function. But there's no learn rates that are that high. So we should be fine. As long as I'm, as long as I keep that, um, keep that at 16 bits, then there should be no practical reason why that'll run out. Why, why that will ever loop back around. Yeah, so we should be all right. Yeah, 255 times 255 is... No, wait, times? That'd be 255 squared. Yeah. 255 times 255 is 2 to the 16. That's the same thing. Well, technically 256 times 256. No, wait. Well, never mind. Sometimes I get lost in, like, counting 0 as 1, and then... Uh, things. Anyway... All right. Now I think I think that should work, and then check to see if it's ready to learn. If it's, if it is, it's going to go to the spell learn function, which should be pretty simple. I'll do that on my own, and then it's ready to exit. If it's not ready to learn, it comes up, checks the next spell. If there's another spell, if not, then we're going to go up here and do this. Yeah, that's that's what's sixteen. All right. All right, because FF times FF, okay, no, plus 99, okay, well, there you go, there you go, we make it. <coughs> It's because it's 256 squared, isn't it? It'd be if I was doing... 
It'd be doing if I was doing one zero zero squared is what gets me up to the next one. Not one under that. Ninety nine times ninety nine isn't two hundred. Right? What am I doing? Yeah. And that's what gets there. Right. This is all simple stuff, and I do know this, but sometimes when you get on stream and you're like focusing on doing stuff and talking to people and all the other things, like little things slip that your brain would normally check for you. <coughs> all right. So are we good? Are there any other... Have we, have we run into any other major flaws you guys can think of? We're only looking at three sketches, uh, well, four bytes of RAM, um, but they're all going to be self-contained here. So nothing that should crop up. I think we've got it. I think we've got the logic. I think I have the correct opcodes worked out for it. It just needs to be coded which I probably will not do tonight. Which I will probably not do tonight. That's gonna take me some time to work out and it's gonna look really, really boring. The planning is really the part that's that's interesting. And I'll clean this up and then I'll show it to you guys maybe next week if it's all if it's all working. Or get something up on the um, get something up on the forum so you guys can see it. Well can't you tell? <laughs> can't you tell from the diagram? <laughs> also, hey, Sir Night, dude. No, uh, we were working out. We're working out some of the stuff for the Magic 2.0. Um, and so I decided to tackle the hardest part first, which is learning magic. And we just spent some time diagramming all that out, and I made it look really, really sloppy because this should go down here, and this should go up here. Let's let's clean that up, actually. So we can do this. Slide you up there. Ah, don't do that. Undo. All right. I know this is super weird, guys, but it's going to make me feel so much better. You have no idea. Is the spell what we want? If not, we're checking more spells on the Esper. Okay. That should look like an arrow, not a line. And learn spell function technically is an exit. Okay, that's prettier. That looks so much better. All right. We so we were working out our variables, what we need to save, what we need to keep. Um, actually, at the very end of the spell learn function, when it comes back out, it actually does need to do one more thing, which I should make note of. Which is, um, to pull x and y back out. And this will be a JSR, not a jump. So technically, bam. All right. So at the end, we're going to pull X and Y <coughs> and then exit. That's what it is. This is how we do it when it's Thursday night. <laughs> One of these days, I might actually break into song. All right. Well, there we go. There we go. All right, we've got something to work with. You, you guys have no idea. I spent all week on this. And most of it was organizing, actually, the um, the stuff ahead of time, making sure I knew what it was I was looking at, because a lot of it wasn't documented on specifically what it was. I had to go into it and figure out which one was which. But I've got it. I've got it reorganized. I've got a plan. Once I get this in place, I'll be able to use something very similar for um, displaying percentages in C3. 
I'm going to get this cracking, okay? I'm going to get this cracking. I think I'm going to cut it off for the night. Um, next week, I'll come up with a plan, and I'll try to be better prepared. But I think this was really helpful. I think this was really helpful. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys want me to do next week. Uh, I will I'll, Maybe I'll put up a couple options. I could do some more map stuff, because I didn't get very far in that. I could um, work on more coding. I probably will not be 100% done with the um, Magic 2.0 update. I could keep working on some trance stuff. I could do some more other fun stuff with like abilities. I could do some stuff with, um, I've been thinking about doing some spriting on there. I've been working on, you know, do some more work with Cirrus' sprite. I gave him a riding sprite and a crouching sprite. The crouching sprite's a little meh. But I, I'd have fun doing some graphical stuff for a change. I really enjoy doing the um, when I was making the splash page and my and like just my big wallpaper logo. And so I would love to do more of that stuff for fun. So I, m I might do a chill week next week because the last two weeks, for me anyway, have been heavy coding, which is kind of draining with trance and now with magic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do something a little chill next week. Um, but yeah, let me know, let me know what you guys are really interested in, because if you guys are interested in other stuff, then by all means, by all means. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming out. I was really happy that we apparently didn't get cut off too much. Maybe the convention ended already, or maybe, um, I stream on a lower resolution than other people. I don't know, but it worked and I'm happy it worked <laughs> and I'm feeling pretty good about, uh, feeling pretty good about tonight. All right, guys, I will catch you on the forum. You guys need to get busy on there. It's been dead. I want to see you posting on the forum. Everybody needs to post tomorrow something. I don't care what it is. <laughs> and um, so get on the forum, get active, get working on your own hacks. I want to see more questions in chat because I like answering questions and I like helping people with stuff. So come up with something to ask me next week. Get here next week. And I will see you then. Happy hacking, guys. Have a good night.